So the next tutorial is uh, losing the game, which will be when the snake head crashes into the wall or crashes into itself. So if we're right here on the snake head sprite, we want this to project game over for whenever our snake head crashes into the wall. All right, and of course, stop everything and cause us to have to reset. So we will say, whenever our flag is clicked, we can say forever. If our snake head is touching the edge, which is an option in here, then we want to say game over. Now, because we have two things that are uh, going to cause us to have game over, we can actually use this uh, command in here called broadcast. We can say broadcast a message, and we'll just make a new message that says game over. Makes it a little bit easier rather than coding the same thing twice. So game over would mean um, when I receive the game over message, we want to uh, stop everything. Now, I'm not going to put this exactly here. What I want to do is I want to make another sprite that's going to be a big sign that just says game over. So we'll get this out of here for right now, and we will create a new sprite with text that just says game over. Right, we'll have it nice and big on our screen here. So there's no question as to what's happened. So we will say under our code for when our flag is clicked, we want to hide this thing. So in looks, we will say hide. And we can say when I receive the message game over, first we want to show this thing and then stop everything and stop all. all right so when we crash into the wall game over is broadcasted this sprite is going to receive game over it's going to show it and stop it perfect it's exactly what we want all right so as we're playing now everything should happen as the way we want it to be and the only thing that's going to cause this game to be over is if we ever touch the edge with the snake head which we just did okay so now things will get a little bit more confusing when we have the snake crash into itself. So we're going to go back here to our snake head, and we have to think about what we have to do. So this is just one sprite right now. So it's very difficult to say if the snake head touches one of the clones or crashes into one of the clones, broadcast game over or end the game. It's very difficult to do with one sprite. There may be a way to do it somehow, but I find it's really easy to create what we call a snake head dummy and have that always on the snake head. So we're gonna take this snake head and we're just gonna duplicate it, right? We want the same size, the same shape and everything, but we really don't want the code to be similar at all. So we can get rid of all the code and we just have this snake head too, which I'm gonna call the snake head dummy. Now our snake head dummy is gonna have really, really simple code, but it'll allow us to do some creative things in snake head. We will say forever, when this is clicked, just go to snakehead. So you're never really going to see this thing. It's there. The snakehead dummy is on the snakehead. So it doesn't really improve our gameplay at all. But in our coding, it allows for us to do this. We can say for our clones, Whenever I start as clone, if we're touching the snake head dummy, then we can project game over. So that means the head of the snake touching the clone, it allows us for that other option in here to have instead of touching one of our sprites, our snake head dummy will be right in here. So we can say forever. If we're touching. Snakehead dummy, then we're just going to broadcast game over 
the whole game. Right? Now we run into a problem here where the snakehead dummy is always going to be touching a clone because we're constantly making clones from the beginning. What we need to do is provide a little bit of time here in order for the snakehead dummy to get away from the clones to be able to go forward and turn and move around right between when I start as clone and forever if we're touching the snakehead dummy then game over. So up here we can use our wait command. We can put in for one second which now allows us time to get away from our clones. Personally I believe one second is too long because it allows you to make these quick moves. So I believe that it's much better if we bring that down to about 0.5, right? but it will allow for us it will allow for us to um, get away from our snakehead and gives us some time to, to have us not crash into, um, into the snakehead clones. All right, and that's doing what we want it to do now. Okay, so everything should be working exactly as we want it to now. Uh, at this point in our next tutorial, we will talk about adding in some other elements to make the game more personalized. I'm sure by now you can make the game personalized and not look exactly like this one is right here. But there are a lot of other things we can add in uh, to make the game more fun and uh, certainly more interesting and well playable.